Uh, are you able to see that? Uh, OK, so the recording has started. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Naneshwar Shirode. Uh, I work in MU College of Commerce, which is located in Pimpri. Uh, I work as an assistant professor of English. Uh, I'm also a research supervisor. And I'm associated with uh, Ramkrishna More College, which is located in Akudi. Uh, that is my research center. Uh, I have been into teaching field for last 15 years and I started teaching uh, LGBT literature, uh, which is an optional paper from last year. Uh, last year uh, I had 12 students and this time we have nine out of which uh, uh, five of you have opted it as a subject and uh, four of four of the students have opted it as an audit course. So this is a, a little bit background about me and uh, let's uh, talk about uh, our subject that is LGBT literature. Uh, before uh, we actually uh, start uh, talking about LGBT literature, uh, I have a question to all of you and uh, the question is very simple. Uh, and I want uh, one by one to answer this question. So we'll start with Karuna first. Uh, and uh, the question is, uh, what do you know or what is your understanding about LGBT literature? So what do you expect uh, from me in this particular course? Or what is your idea about LGBT literature? Over to you, Corona. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, as yes. in uh, last semester, we studied the uh, Dalit literature, and this is the continuation of uh, the Dalit course. So there we uh, there we uh, under but there we learn to learn that uh, Dalit uh, the sub operation uh, on Dalit community communities the patriarchy uh, which forces uh, or the upper caste people people's uh, domination over the lower caste people and and this this subject uh, came into being in 20th century or 21st uh, to be perfect uh, uh, so here here i expect, absolutely yeah sir here i expect to uh, understand the uh, the the sufferings they are going through the community which we which people or society uh, we uh, we we used to hate them or uh, society used to uh, uh, consider them as some someone strange or they don't even treat them like human beings so here i want to learn about more about these communities OK, that's really good, Karuna. Uh, you have very clear purpose. Why do you want to study this literature? Uh, definitely. Uh, you talked about the lit literature which you studied in the previous semester. Uh, I would say that uh, LGBT literature is in tune with uh, the lit literature uh, because uh, these are oppressed communities and uh, they all suffered and even today even today uh, they suffer uh, so uh, be it uh, uh, dalit community or be it lgbt community uh, but the percentage is definitely uh, lower and we will study about uh, about literature uh, which is either written uh, by the community itself or uh, the literature which is written, uh, which is written by people on LGBT community. So we will talk uh, about uh, uh, these two areas and uh, there have been many, many uh, critical essays uh, which have been written on this particular topic. So we will uh, try to focus on uh, those as well. Uh, because we only have uh, you know 15 uh, 
uh, sessions uh, to study. So we'll try to focus uh, as much as possible. OK, Karuna, your purpose is very clear. Now we move to Angashita. So why? Why do you want to study this subject? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so one thing that we see like very commonly is that our idea of normalcy is very limited. We look at a particular, have an idea of normal and that is how we try to project on other people. So even when we talk about uh, representation and things like that, we automatically assume that the person is cis, cis in nature and not maybe not trans. And we so I think the incorporation of LGBT studies in our uh, in our curriculum will actually give us an idea about how to broaden our perspective, how to look at representation and not actually take certain ideas as for truth as per se and not and others as false because uh, it is only recently that we are seeing that India is actually opening up to the idea of LGBT and LGBTQIA plus identities and even then we are not aware of the spectrum the entire spectrum and we don't talk about the other parts of the spectrum so it is important to bring about because i think we'll be the ones who will be going forward moving forward in life with these ideas so i think it's important to have notions clear in the beginning absolutely absolutely i'm also very happy that uh, uh, your purpose purpose is also clear so Navya, uh, would you like to speak? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as uh, Karuna also mentioned, uh, I one of the major purposes of taking up this course was because it is part of uh, resistant literature, which also includes Dalit literature and feminism as well. And I wanted to uh, study this because we and we should have the sensitivity and awareness and like by doing this course i mean i will be able to help other people also have the sensitivity and awareness and a lot of people hold on to this uh, concept of quote unquote purity which is i would say uh, quite recent because before colonial times um there was no such thing as being against LGBT. I mean, it was normal in um, like pretty olden times. And a lot of the older generations consider um, LGBT as a fashion or a trend, which is like um, getting influence from the Western world. So um, yeah, I would like to learn more and understand the history and background and all the politics involved in this better. Yeah. OK, yeah, thank you, Navya. Uh, Dilesha. Uh, yes, sir. good afternoon. Um, so when we talk about LGBT literature, I think um, for us, uh, for our generation, especially that is the millennial generation, I think uh, we, we already know LGBTQI as a trend. And therefore, we know all of the aspects in terms of a general sense because we were brought up to it. But um, I think what this um, subject will bring for us is that we can learn LGBT from a sort of um, technical conceptual method where we learn about history and movements and all of that. So I'm excited about that. And um, another thing for me is I think um, LGBTQI is still very um, taboo and therefore, um, us as literature students, if we go on to become educators in the future, I think the subject is really, really important. And therefore, honestly, this subject is one of the subjects that is a road to a sort of a new world. And therefore, that is the reason I have taken this subject. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, really nice. Uh, and I'm happy that you all have some purpose for selecting this particular subject. And uh, we have the last participant, uh, Three minutes. Uh, no, please uh, excuse me if I have mispronounced this many. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, sir, I'm from Sri Lanka, and I can see uh, LGBTQ has been like, uh, like, 
it has been a, like a trend these days but some people are just doing it as a trend just just following the trend but some people who actually like actually uh, into this thing they are suffering because in our culture uh, we have like kind of restrictions also like so some people are not allowing them to come out and like speak up openly so i think uh, by learning this uh, uh, subject we can like know the means the real means of this subject and we can I think we can this is a good platform to learn about humanity first of all so yeah so I think okay uh, thank you uh, I'm very happy that uh, you all five those who have opted for this course are clear about why do you wish to learn this subject? Now, uh, remember, we will be talking about uh, LGBT literature. And uh, when we talk about LGBT literature, uh, you all are aware that there are uh, different genres of literature. So we have uh, novels, uh, we have plays, we have stories. Uh, we also have movies and uh, we will be uh, talking about these uh, different genres when we are actually studying LGBT literature. Uh, as I also mentioned that there are critical essays also uh, which uh, talk about uh, LGBT literature or LGBT community. So we will be focusing upon uh, uh, these uh, aspects in this particular course. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we will be uh, talking about uh, talking about uh, <clears throat> a play uh, which is which is written by Mahesh Dattani. Uh, Mahesh Dattani. Uh, Mahesh Dattani, he himself uh, belongs to this particular community. And uh, <clears throat> we'll be talking about uh, one of his uh, short plays uh, written uh, by him. And the title, title of that play is uh, Night Queen. Uh, I'm sure that uh, <clears throat> you all are aware of, uh, aware of uh, the flower Night Queen and it blooms only at night. So we'll be talking about uh, LGBT in Indian drama, and that is uh, Night Quinn. Uh, then uh, we are also going to talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the inter uh, before we, uh, in the beginning, we will talk about uh, queer theory. I'm sure that uh, you all are aware of the term queer theory. And uh, as far as uh, the concept or the term queer theory is concerned, uh, it actually combination of uh, LGBTQ. So <clears throat> uh, it's a broader concept and uh, we will be talking about uh, basics of uh, LGBTQ or queer theory. Uh, then, uh, as I told, uh, we will study a drama, a Night Queen, which is written by Mahesh Dattani. Then uh, uh, we have uh, short stories uh, which are written by Dev Dutt Patnayak, a modern writer. Uh, he has written <clears throat> a book 
which is a collection of uh, different stories. Uh, these all are mythological stories and the title of that particular book is Shikhandi and other queer tales they don't tell you. And uh, uh, if you refer to this particular collection of short stories, you know, uh, we have uh, 30 stories uh, which are included in this particular book. And uh, we'll try to study uh, as many as we can. Uh, we'll focus on some uh, major stories uh, from this particular book. Now, it's because, you know, we have only 15 lectures. So uh, we have to uh, focus on uh, all the genres. That's what I personally feel. So we will talk about some stories uh, from Shikanti and other queer tales they don't tell you. Then uh, we will also uh, talk about uh, issue of uh, LGBT uh, in uh, one of the novels, uh, the novel which is written by Manju Kapoor and the title of the novel is A Married Woman. So we have drama, we have short stories, we have a novel as well. So uh, we will talk about uh, the lesbian relationship which is represented uh, in A Married Woman written by Manju Kapoor. Uh, as far as uh, uh, Night Queen is concerned, it focuses, it focuses on uh, a uh, gay relation between the two male characters in the play. It's actually a one act play, so it runs into only eight to ten pages. So we will be actually reading the entire play in the class, uh, which will not be possible uh, while we study a married woman because it runs into many pages. So I would uh, request you to uh, go through, go through the original uh, novel because you know at MA level it is expected that uh, uh, we should have a, a maximum interaction and discussions on whatever literature we study. Uh, this is what uh, I follow in, in my classrooms. Uh, we will also talk about uh, 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 issue of LGBT in Indian movies uh, because uh, there are many movies uh, which talk about uh, queer theory, which talk about LGBTQ uh, in movies. Uh, a recent movie which got released, uh, it's a Bollywood movie. Uh, I'm sure that majority of you must have watched it and uh, the title of that movie is Shubha Mangala Jada Sardhan. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you have uh, watched watched this particular movie uh, because uh, we will be talking about uh, not only one particular movie, uh, but we will uh, talk about uh, few movies. So uh, we have Shubha Mangala Jada Sardhan, uh, which talks about uh, gay uh, relation. Uh, we also have movie Aligat, uh, which also talks about uh, gay relation. Uh, we have many more movies, so uh, you know we will uh, focus on uh, one or two or maximum three movies because uh, we need to discuss the aspect of LGBT in uh, Bollywood movies. Uh, to be precise, Bollywood movies, if I say Indian movies, uh, it's a very broad concept because in India we have uh, uh, many movies uh, region wise which are released every year. But uh, our focus would be on Bollywood movies because that is the most popular uh, in India. Those movies are most popular in India. So we'll talk about uh, that as well. Uh, then uh, we will also talk about uh, some theory, uh, theory part. 
and you know uh, we will uh, focus on uh, sexual identity development models now there are two critics or thinkers uh, vivian cas and anthony d ogilvy uh, these two uh, thinkers have uh, proposed uh, Uh, sexual identity development models and they in detail talk about uh, various uh, stages uh, various stages of uh, uh, these people various stages of uh, these people and how this sexual identity <clears throat> changes uh, among these community members so we will be talking about uh, them uh and we'll study uh, both the models uh we'll also uh, talk about uh, an essay uh, which is which is written by Judith Butler uh, the essay is titled as critically queer so that is the essay which we would uh, focus upon uh, and you know uh, while we are discussing uh, critical essays Uh, we need to we need to uh, study essay minutely so we will be actually uh, analyzing that particular essay line by line uh, don't worry i will be uploading the material on moodle so that uh, you can download it uh, well in advance and then you can read it before uh, we come to the class so this is what uh, i plan to discuss uh, in this particular course uh, lgbt literature and then um, to begin with uh, we'll we'll start with uh, the concept called queer theory and uh, you know uh, we have a book which is written by m h abrams and uh, the book is titled as a glossary of literary terms so uh, to begin with uh, we'll try to understand the concept of queer theory uh, i think uh, uh, someone left the meeting angashita okay <clears throat> so a uh, queer theory you know uh, if you uh, try to try to find out uh, the history history of queer theory then uh, you will realize that you know uh, in the past the concept the concept was uh, attached only to gay and lesbian studies and criticism so you know queer theory uh, is often used to designate the combined area of gay and lesbian studies and criticism so this is a uh, uh, the concept concept of uh, queer theory so you know the focus was only on uh, gay and lesbian studies and criticism uh, but if you uh, look at uh, the recent development <clears throat> uh, you know that uh, it talks about lgbt so lgbt stands for lesbian gay bisexual and transgender so you know uh the narrow concept the narrow concept of queerness uh has been expanded and uh when the focus was only on gay and lesbian community in the past but now the focus has shifted 
uh, not only to uh, gay and lesbian community, but also bisexual and uh, transgenders. So this is something important because, you know, the transgenders uh, were often uh, ignored or neglected by the main community. And uh, one of you, or rather two or three of you, rightly pointed out that uh, there is a tremendous discrimination. And, you know, uh, here we can correlate it, uh, uh, correlate it with uh, the lit literature. Now, you know, our society, our society uh, is uh, divided into different walls. And these walls are of uh, different castes. And, you know, if you refer our history, uh, we know that uh, uh, Shudras uh, were always uh, dominated by other three Varnas in Indian context. So, you know, uh, and they were ill-treated, but the constitution gave them rights after independence, and uh, that really helped to bring all these people into mainstream. But that wasn't the case, uh, that wasn't the case with uh, uh, this community, that wasn't the case with this community. And, uh, you know, even today, even today, uh, transgenders, transgenders are ignored. Now, okay, see, gay, lesbian, and bisexual, these identities, uh, uh, you know, from outer side, we cannot identify whether the person is gay, lesbian, or bisexual. So they are in mainstream. But what happens with transgenders? So transgenders uh, uh, suffer more means they all suffer, but transgenders suffer more <clears throat> than uh, other three communities, uh, that is gay, lesbian, and bisexual. Uh, fortunately, uh, you know, uh, in recent years, uh, if you refer to any admission form, you know, UGC has <clears throat> made it mandatory that uh, students or applicants can disclose their identity as uh, male, female, or transgender. I'm sure that when you all filled in uh, admission form, uh, you would know that uh, these three options are available now. So thanks to UGC and their uh, uh, policies that uh, we need to bring all these members in the mainstream. <clears throat> uh, even though <clears throat> Uh, there are people and uh, communities, those who are trying, social reformers, uh, those who are trying to bring these community members in mainstream, but they have not uh, got success the way they expected. Then, uh, when we talk about queer theory and when we refer to uh, queer literature, uh, you know, what uh, do we see? Uh, we talk about uh, theoretical as well as critical writings uh, which concern with all modes of variance. So, you know, that includes uh, cross-dressing. Then it also talks about uh, the normative model of biological sex, gender identity, and sexual desires. So, you know, when we are talking about queer theory, oh, we need to focus on, uh, <clears throat> uh, we need to focus on all these aspects uh, when we are studying this particular subject. And that's why, you know, why we are uh, going to talk about, why we are going to talk about uh, Judith Butler's essay, because it critically analyzes uh, not only the literature, but also uh, certain basic concepts about this. And, you know, uh, in the beginning, the term queer was considered derogatory. And, you know, uh, 
the concept or the term queer was used and uh, inform to the world that uh, male and fem uh, male and female uh, same sex love is unnatural so you know uh, the intention of using this uh, concept of queer uh, was not at all positive in the past. Even today, uh, uh, m nothing much has changed, uh, but uh, there is at least uh, some development and there is some protection from law as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, since the early 1990s, so, you know, Uh, these community members, so you know, we can simply segregate that the situation which was prior to 1990s and situation which we have after 1990s. Now again, when I, when I talk about situation prior to 1990s and situation after 1990s, it actually refers to situation in developed countries. So this is not the case with uh, India because it's a uh, even a developing, uh, even today it's a developing nation. But you know, uh, the community members, uh, that is LGBT community members, uh, decided, decided that uh, uh, they would uh, identify themselves as queer. And they started uh, applying this particular concept uh, for their own benefit. So, uh, you know, uh, as they started using uh, this concept, you know, uh, people started uh, thinking about uh, their way of life and people started uh, talking critically, people in the sense thinkers. I'm not talking about common men. I'm talking about uh, social reformers or critical thinkers or writers. And, you know, uh, people started making scholarly inquir inquiries about LGBT or about queer theory. And, you know, uh, you will find uh, these uh, details uh, in books which are written by uh, Teresa de Laurentiis and uh, the title uh, of the scholarly inquiry is queer queer theory uh, lesbian and gay sexualities uh, which was published in 1991 and then uh, we also have another uh, writing called queer theory an introduction which was published in 1996 by anna mary jagos so you know uh, people or the writers uh, started expressing themselves uh, with the help of literature. Uh, we need to trace uh, the history more. And you know, uh, when we try to trace history, uh, we come to know that uh, uh, both lesbian studies as well as gay studies, uh, they both began as liberation movements. So they wanted liberty. And you know, uh, the liberation movements started in parallel with the movements for African American and feminist liberation. And uh, you know, uh, we know that uh, we know about uh, liberation movement of African American, and there is a lot of literature which is also uh, written on African American uh, scenes. Uh, there is also feminism and feminist literature. So, uh, you know, women also suffered. And why feminism became one of the prominent uh, area of studies was the reason. And why do we have LGBT or queer theory as a prominent uh, form of literature? It's all because uh, there was uh, a lot of discrimination uh, 
made by common people. Now, when I say common people, that does not mean that uh, uh, these people are uncommon. Uh, I just mean to say that it's to whom we consider common. So we consider ourselves that, oh, I do not belong to LGBT community. That means I'm normal person, I'm common person. So again, that is a misconception because uh, uh, when we actually try to interact with these community members, you will realize that how do they suffer uh, and they, how they are suppressed, they are neglected by the main society. So, you know, uh, uh, this was actually a liberation movement. Uh, which started actually in the late 1960s and 1970s. And you know, uh, uh, these uh, movements actually uh, maintained a relation uh, to the political activities. So you know, they also realized that uh, you need a political support if you really want to get success or if you really wish to make reforms. And you know, they all started fighting and initial, uh, uh, initially they actually wanted uh, political, legal and economic rights uh, which would be equal to those of the heterosexual majority. So, you know, what was the intention of uh, these liberation movements? The main intention was to get basic rights like political rights, legal rights, as well as economic rights. But again, but again, uh, even though uh, these rights uh, exist on paper, many a times uh, uh, these rights are not executed in reality. I'm talking about uh, uh, Indian scenario. Uh, in Western countries, uh, the situation is uh, altogether uh, different because uh, they are much advanced in terms of thinking and awareness about rights is concerned. Uh, you know, what was the issue uh, with these movements? You know, uh, there were gay community members and there were lesbian community members. So, you know, uh, in 1970s, uh, when these uh, liberation movements uh, started, when they started fighting for their rights, you know, uh, uh, they both were not united. That is, gays and lesbians were, were not uh, united because gays uh, always uh, thought themselves as quintessentially male so you know gay community people thought that they are in uh, in quintessentially uh, close to male community and uh, lesbian uh, members uh, those who are female members you know they actually thought of, uh, you know, they are aligned, they are aligned towards a feminist movement. And, you know, there were, you know, differences of opinion between these two communities as well, uh, because, you know, uh, these lesbian members uh, thought of gay movement as anti-female attitude. And then uh, in near future, when they realize that they need to fight for their rights together, and that's why they came together, and a common name was given to uh, these community members, and the common name was queer or queer theory.
Okay, is it clear till now? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'm sure that uh, when we talk about the background of uh, LGBT community or queer theory, uh, what do we realize? Uh, we realize uh, certain points. Uh, can somebody uh, 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 would like to answer? Uh, does anyone want to answer this question? Uh, what are the key takeaways when we talk about the background of queer theory? Any one of you can answer. Uh, yes. So, so yeah, there were a lot of differences among the entire community, and they were not united, and they thought of themselves in um, maybe we can say a patriarchal fashion where they're considering male and female very differently because if the gays were um, considering themselves to be a part of the male community and the lesbians thought of themselves um, and their movement as just a um, feminist uh, community. So they were unable to uh, come together for this issue. And uh, yeah, probably this caused a delay in the realization of their rights and later on they all um, became united because they felt that there was a yeah similar uh, deep rooted issue which had to be fought for together absolutely now where yeah, you have summarized it uh, very well and uh, remember that uh, uh, remember some years 1970 so, you know, 1970 to 1990, so it took almost 20 years uh, for them to realize that they need to uh, fight for their rights together. And if they uh, fight uh, separately, then uh, that would be a problem and they won't get their rights. Now, this is all about uh, till 1970 and then, you know, uh, in 1980s and 1990s, so you know there are there are many changes uh, which uh, took place because uh, there were uh, many uh, writers uh, uh, who raised questions and they actually analytically analyzed the viewpoints which were expressed in the past, and so you know we have uh, viewpoints and analytical methods of uh, writers like Derrida, Foucault, and other post-structuralist. And uh, you know, uh, their viewpoints or their opinions uh, changed the entire scenario. And you know, what was their assumption? Uh, means uh, they uh, their assumption that you know uh, about gay and lesbian identity, uh, whatever traditional assumptions were, uh, those were uh, put to question. And you know uh, whatever was historical and critical analysis, uh, which uh, means there were certain features which were actually. Uh, attached to these community members and then uh, those were actually put to questions by these post structuralists and then uh, the complexity increased so remember that uh, these 1980s and 1990s that these post structuralists uh, talked about uh, the issues uh, which are uh, related to which are related to lgbt community and you know foucault uh, has actually, Foucault has actually uh, focused on uh, these issues, uh, issues in his uh, uh, books. Uh, I'll definitely share those books to you because uh, we won't have time to read uh, all those four volumes which he wrote, uh, which, uh, which uh, are written by Foucault. <clears throat> Uh, 
And you know uh, what uh, actually these queer theorists uh, talked about in 1990s or rather after 1990s, that is they adopted the deconstructive mode of uh, dismantling uh, of the key binary oppositions uh, which was prominent in Western culture. So you know uh, what are these uh, binary uh, concepts which we have in Western culture? So we have male, female, we have heterosexual and homosexual, uh, we have natural and unnatural. So this was this is actually the traditional viewpoint. That is, uh, you are either a male or female, you are either a heterosexual or homosexual, you are either uh, <coughs> natural or unnatural uh, when it comes to uh, your sexual desires. So, you know, uh, this was a binary uh, breakup of the Western culture, and that was put to question by the post structuralist. And then uh, they started uh, talked about, uh, they started talking about two categories. That is, uh, you know, we need to look at uh, things uh, from two different uh, categories. And uh, what are these two categories? And number one, that is, uh, the one category is uh, privileged, powerful, and uh, they are at the central. And the second category is that of uh, derogated, subordinated, and marginalized. So, you know, this was uh, 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 very prominent uh, in the theory of deconstruction. So, uh, you know, uh, LGBT or queer theory was part of the second category. And what was that category? Uh, you are either derogated, you are subordinated, and you are marginalized. And uh, that's why, you know, somebody answered when I asked a question that we can correlate it with Dalit literature. Why? Because uh, the Dalit community also belonged to the second category. That is, they were also derogated, they were also subordinated, and they were also marginalized. Even though I have used past tense, so we can use present tense as well, because the situation in India has not changed much. Definitely it had changed for sure, but uh, when we uh, talk in terms of percentage, uh, the percentage is even today at higher level. Now, you know, we all are very fortunate that we all uh, are in city areas, but if you actually go in rural areas, uh, you will find uh, real issues. And, uh, and you know, 70% of population of India, even today, stays in rural areas. So this is actually uh, the development. Uh. <coughs> Let's move further. Uh, there is an important essay uh, which was written in uh, 1980 uh, compulsive heterosexuality and lesbian existence and the essay was written by uh, adrian rich and you know uh, in this particular essay uh, she called the concept uh, lesbian continuum and you know, uh, what does she mean by this uh, lesbian continuum? Uh, uh, she talked about it is a way of stressing how far ranging and diverse is the spectrum of love and bonding among women, including female friendship, the family relationship between mother and daughter, and women's partnerships and social groups, as well as overtly physical same-sex relations. So, you know, uh, the writers, the critical writers started talking about this openly and uh, uh, Andrew Rich uh, talked about a lesbian continuum and uh, 
in this she not only talked about uh, physical same sex relation uh, that is two women or two girls who are involved uh, in physical uh, relationship and that also physical sexual relationship but she also talked about uh, uh, female friendship she talked about mother daughter relationship and she also talked about women's partnerships and social groups and uh, you know this kind of uh, approach was never adopted by anybody uh, and even though uh, it was adopted by few but it was not uh, that in detail but uh, adrian rich uh, talked about uh, this in her essay and uh, she tried to uh, give some sort of positivity because see when you talk about a mother daughter relationship now when it is mother daughter relationship it's positive relationship isn't it when we say uh, mother and daughter they both have uh, good chemistry and they have very good relation with each other uh, we think in positive way we don't think in negative way why why don't we think in negative way because we are culturally bound to think it as positive a uh, father son relationship is also seen in a positive way in indian context why because we or our mindset is trained in that manner and then uh, this was actually the change or beginning of the change and then uh, we have a few more theorists like eve uh, sadwick and judith butler <clears throat> and uh, they inverted the standard hierarchical opposition by which homosexuality is ma marginalized and made unnatural by stressing the extent to which the ostensible normativity of heterosexuality is based on the suppression and denial of same sex desires and relationships so they attack the mindset of the society itself and uh, what do they talk about uh, that is a uh, sedwick and judith butler that is uh, homosexuality is marginalized or homosexuality is considered as unnatural because uh, the society uh, believes that uh, heterosexuality uh, is a normal uh, way of functioning in terms of sexual relationship is concerned and then they raise the question that is why uh, there is a denial of same sex desires and relationships so this was the query or this was the question uh, which was raised by them and you know if you look at 1990 or uh, 1980 onwards you know uh, 1970 uh, the movement started two different movements by 1990 they realized that they need to work together in 1980s there were many writers who started expressing their views and uh, we have uh, important uh, writers uh, uh, those who are from post structuralism or the post structuralist derrida foucault those who raised uh, questions about this they raised questions based on key binary system Uh, and uh, they categorized human society into two parts and in 1980 uh, adrian rich talked about lesbian continuum and that essay was also an eye opener and it was uh, moved forward by eve uh, sadwick and judith butler <coughs> uh, where they attacked the society and they stated that you know the society denies the same sex desires and relationships uh, and they said uh, that is homosexuality <clears throat> is considered as uh, as uh, unnatural and it is marginalized by people those who are heterosexual okay is it is it uh, clear till now 
Yes, yes. Okay, so I think uh, uh, we'll continue with this particular uh, theory in uh, coming week. I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, today's class and there was some sort of understanding uh, related to queer theory and uh, I focused upon uh, some of the important years and the development of uh, queer theory and I also refer to some of the essays. Uh, definitely I'll try to post these essays in the Moodle group and if I'm unable to do that uh, I'll definitely post it uh, in our WhatsApp group. So before I call it a day, uh, do you have any questions to ask? So our Moodle group is going to get upgraded or something. So I think it will be uh, our older Moodle group will be shut down for some time. So could you send the thing, uh, the essays in our WhatsApp group or something? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I actually I prefer to send uh, on WhatsApp group. So I'll definitely do that and as a backup, I'll send it uh, on Moodle group as well. Don't worry. So wherever you have access, I'm sure that you all would have access on WhatsApp group. Yes. Uh, because your cell is always with you. Uh, like everybody has uh, their cell phone with them. So and uh, majority of you might be attending classes from your mobile phone. So no issues at all. Uh, I'll post it at uh, both the platforms. Don't worry about it. Okay. Sir, I think the new Moodle group hasn't come out yet. The new one. Okay, okay. So we'll just uh, sort it out. I'll talk to the authorities of the university, but don't worry. I'll post it uh, by tomorrow. Uh, yes, what, okay. Whatever we have talked about so that uh, you can keep reading. And you know, uh, I'm very happy that you are very interactive. All five of you, you are participating uh, in the discussions. Uh, and uh, we'll keep doing that uh, in our coming lectures as well. So thank you and uh, I request uh, all of you to leave the meeting and uh, see you on coming Friday at 2 and I'll be following the same link uh, for conducting our classes. So thank you and bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.